Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Witcher 3. We got Novograd in the distance over there. It actually looks really, really pretty. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of um, main quest content in this episode. Um, gotta find a way to cross the Pontar first. I didn't really think this through. Uh, okay. Okay, so we can either go into Novograd from this entrance or from the more kind of eastern, northern entrance. Um, I think most people, what, what, what they do when they first enter Novograd is they either enter through one of the southern egg entrances, mm, like any one of the three. But for me, I'm going to enter through this one, I think. There's a place of interest along the way. I think uh, I'm going to take care of that while we are here. And uh, just see what we have. So off screen, I actually went and visited a couple of merchants. Um, specifically that Ophiri one that we raced and got the saddle from. Um, and the one we like found a bunch of Ophiri diagrams for. Uh, and it turns out that that dude actually sold Ori Halcom ore. So if you remember, we actually need some Ori Halcom ore to craft the next stage of our Griffin armor set. So I'm kind of happy about that. Which means the next chance I have uh, at an armor smith, I'm gonna go ahead and just upgrade my Griffin armor set. For now though, there is a hag thing here. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna actually apply an oil to my weapon here. Um, let's see what we have. We got some, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do a rhyme oil. And I actually really like this thing. I mean, obviously the enhanced version is much better. It has a way higher chance of inflicting that freeze. But, you know, the regular version is not terrible either. Oh god, man, my game lagged there for a second. So it's got like a 3% chance, but um, as you can see here, it's actually working out pretty well. Okay. Come on. We can do this. Oh, man, I hate that thing. <laughs> Where it kind of just like pops up from underneath the ground and attacks me for a lot of damage. Well, too bad for the... I think that was a water hag. Too bad for the water hag. Uh, we are actually quite powerful, so... Any lack of skill on my part is made up for. Um, uh, because of the fact that my weapon is pretty strong and my character is pretty well developed at this point. Okay, so we got some random treasure here. There's actually a bear trap on top of this chest. You see that? <laughs> can I, can I like step on it? No, I cannot. Okay, that's fine. That was a really quick and simple uh, place of interest there. Aw, uh, didn't get a lot from it either, but it's okay. So now... Uh, as far as the main quest goes, our next next objective is to obviously find Siri inside Novograd. And uh, why don't we just refresh our memory a little bit? We got the quest here called Pyres of Novograd. The objective is to visit Triss in her house. Uh, to those of you who have not played any Witcher games before, Triss is a sorceress who kind of had a little affair with Geralt. Like a really, not a little one, like a really long one. Um, Geralt lost his memory because he was stabbed in the back with, oh, maybe the front, I don't remember by a pitchfork and then um, uh, he was unconscious for a long time he wakes up loses his memory because well I don't really want to spoil anything beyond that and basically uh, he forgot all about Yennefer or so he claims uh, and um, he spent a long time with Triss and that is actually the story for The Witcher 2 if you haven't played that already so the summary here is Ciri's trail to Geralt to Novograd, the largest city in the north. It would take seas of ink to describe the city accurately. So suffice it to say, it is the seat of the Church of the Eternal Fire, a bustling port city and a haven for artists, and all sorts of other shady characters. Yet Novograd at this time was not the city Geralt knew from his earlier travels. War raged throughout the known world, and rich cities often proved tempting morsels to armies on the march. It was clear at this time that this particular morsel had both Radovid and Amir greedily licking their chops. Within the city, the Temple Guard acted with impunity under the command of the cankerous snot named Caleb Menga, and with the support of that terror-spreading band of ze zealots, the Witch Hunters. Meanwhile, the kingpins of the city's underworld still held much of it in their sleazy grasp. Finding Siri here would be like searching for a needle in a burning haystack. Geralt would clearly need some assistance. Luckily, an old acquaintance of his now lived in Novograd. Her name was Triss Marigold. Alright, awesome. That gave us a little bit of a background information on Novograd. Uh, there's certainly a very expansive underworld here, um, ruled by these three, by these three, uh, what did the, what did the underline call like kingpins or whatever? Uh, yeah, so we'll definitely get to meet those people eventually. For now, though, just look at this place, man. Uh, I think I have said this before, but Novograd is the absolute 
best designed city in all of gaming, period. And if there is a better one, prove me wrong, please. Just the entrance here, you can see how grand this city is. Wonderful. And you have like people, look at this, look at this attention to detail. You got this kid here just like walking um, on the railing. I mean, there's a little glitch here which her foot kind of clips through that rock once in a while, but you know, it's not a big deal. You enter this place and you feel like you're inside a city, right? You're not just inside some kind of, um, you know, hastily put together town that they didn't put much thought into. No, this is a live, uh, bustling city. So, let's start by taking a look here. We got... We got some of these henchmen here, Horson's henchmen, and oh my gosh, I can actually enter this place? <laughs> let's do it! I'm just gonna do a little bit of exploring before I, I uh, head over to the main quest and just see what I can find. Novograd is absolutely massive, so it's not scaled down at all. It has like all the houses, it has all the inhabitants, um, you got the rich and the poor sectors, you got the docks, you got the marketplace, you got the brothels, and everything. I can't, I can't even go over everything this place has. Greetings. What have you got to pawn, and how much do you need? What makes you think I need a loan? Taint a man that don't from time to time, and you don't look nor smell flush with coin. Just so happens I'm doing fine at the moment. Then maybe you'd like a look at what the less fortunate have forfeited. Oh, very interesting. Let's see what he has. Show me what you have in stock. The dude's a loan shark, I'm guessing he's also a pawn shop, but look at that, he has nothing. <laughs> He's got a book, Change Your Life, a handbook. Well then, uh, I believe this is a merchant that you can sell everything for a reasonable price for. Let's see, let's just sell that off. Um, I also want to see, do I have any trophies on me? Ah, damn it, I don't have any trophies. I wanted to see if this guy buys trophies for a decent price, but I've already sold off most of them for like 20% of their base value, I think. Mm, it's not a great deal, but I just felt like uh, cleaning my inventory a little bit. Been a loan shark long? Aye. Since I was just a little tyke. So you helped your dad, took it over when he died? Nah, my own father left me here in pawn and never did redeem me. <laughs> hmm, <laughs> okay. He does play Gwent, so I think I'm gonna just do this real quick. Ten crowns. What would you say to a few rounds of Gwent? Once again, guys, I know Gwent is not for everyone, and I know like some people just don't enjoy it at all. If you don't like it, please just skip it because there's no reason to suffer through this game if you don't like it. For me though, uh, I I love Gwent so much, like so much. And I don't play the multiplayer version anymore, but seriously, the, this this charming version from like The Witcher 3, right here that I'm playing, um, it's probably one of my favorite mini games in a game like ever. If not my favorite, like if not just my absolute favorite. Because even though there's not a lot of depth, um, it's still a surprising amount of depth for kind of a mini game inside such a massive single player RPG. Okay, so we're gonna start with this guy here, and uh, my opponent is just not letting up. Oh my god, that's a lot of tempo for the f second turn. Hmm, I think I'm gonna. Hmm, let's see, does this guy bond with uh, this? <laughs> no, why would it? Okay, well, these two bond together for a measly amount of points, but what can I do? Okay, so at this point, I think what I'm gonna do... I don't want to forfeit the round yet, which means I'm gonna play like really low tempo, and then... Mm, should I do that? I always have Letho here to destroy the strongest unit on the battlefield, that's 18 points. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna play like relatively low tempo, see what he does. Okay, because at any time I can just do like a eight, 12 plus 18, a 30 point swing. Um, even though right now it's not enough to take the game, but if I just play another card here, I can do that. Oh man, okay. This guy really doesn't want to lose the first round, which is, uh, which is I guess fine. Mm. Well, I suppose I can play Gaunter. I really don't want to play my Spy before I play Gaunter because I might draw into those Shadows. Uh, that's one of the problems with uh, with running these um, Shadows in my deck. 
Okay, so he's going to pass after I do a big tempo play, which is fine. Um, I'm down by 21 points. I can't take, the, take it with one card except for this guy. Um, that plays the two strongest cards in my hand, but I'm totally okay with it because at this point, I'm winning the round and I'm winning the round on even card advantage. And plus, I have all this carryover and this spy in my hand as well. So, yeah, at this point I'll be shocked if he actually wins. Clear weather. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's probably just stalling me, but why don't we take a peek in his hand, shall we? So he's got Kaerin, Griffin, and Frightener. So he's got like some pretty strong cards, but we can just bleed that all out of him in this round. You can see here that the AI is, uh, actually knows what it's doing. It's playing like the weakest cards first, but um, there's really nothing they can do in this situation. So just play out the Ogeared. He's going to play out the Frightener, and I'm going to pass. Okay. And would you look at that? Double carryover. I don't even need to play a card from my hand. <laughs> okay. So this deck is pretty good. I mean, the generic cards in this deck are pretty good. The actual Nilfgaard faction cards, they're pretty trash, but <laughs> eventually they'll get better. Fucking hey, Okay, so um, let's just follow the quest objective here, and uh, this will bring us through the kind of poorer parts of town. Um, this place is called The Bits. Oh my god, look at this. There are so many houses here in Novograd, and we can enter a lot of them. So crazy. No matter how many hours I spend this game, I'm still like shocked how much detail went into this one city. Looking for a barber? Well, you found one. Welcome. I'll plow and shave the gentleman's noggin for half price. <laughs> Give me a haircut. Uh, as long as your hands aren't too shaky. Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't trust this guy to cut my hair. Look at that. He's like shaking. Wobbling back and forth. He's clearly drunk or high or both. <laughs> uh, I don't want to change up my beard. Actually, I don't want to get a haircut at all. I I really like Geralt's so default hairstyle. There are some ridiculous ones that we can uh, we can actually get, but unfortunately, there is no preview option in this game, which means that in order to see the hairstyle, we have to um, commit to it. Uh oh man, I just. <laughs> I just walked into this guy's alleyway. No way out. Alright, so let's just keep on going. We got this little plaza here. There is this um, Priest of the Eternal Fire. Let's see what he's saying. Oh, bad mouthing witchers. That's all you can say. Hey. Step away. Blasphema. Step away. Wow. Okay, so he's clearly not a big fan of us. Let's see what's in this house here. Oh wait, this is just a lone shark again. Okay. <laughs> All right, gonna follow the quest here. Um, I don't want to get too carried away with exploring the city, because I did promise that there's gonna be some story content in this episode. So, um, yeah, if I spend too much time just exploring. I'm not going to get anything done because Novograd is massive, as I already said. I do want to talk to these, uh... <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't have talked to these. My man comes home, blood died, head to toe every day. Help a poor fellow out. Hmm. Shut off, Skyver. Plenty of beggars. If you see my game kind of, like, um lagging a little bit, like dropping a couple of frames, that's because it's trying to load all of the people in the town. Uh, when we're out there uh, in the wilderness of Velen, there isn't a lot of textures to load, a lot of, there, there aren't a lot of like people, but in town there are so many people, so um, we won't get like a smooth 60 FPS all the time. In fact, it is going to jitter quite a bit. I hope that's okay. Okay, I don't really care about the iron ore. Uh, and there should be another person. merchant over here. Ah! Oh. Yes, Buzzle. this guy. Come on, come on. Oh, he's not a real merchant. This is the real merchant. Ah! Is it? Come on, let me talk to you. Hmm? Okay, I guess he's not a real merchant either. You. Aha. Uh -huh. The best stock in all Novigrad. No need to push enough for all comers. Uh, no one 
and two push. Very good. Manners before trade, always. <laughs> okay, let's see what he has. Let me have a look. Okay, he's got ooh, some crafting materials. These peppers are really good because they weigh very little, they cost very little, and they have, uh, I mean, their recovery is kind of subpar, but beggars can't be choosers with food like this, so I'm going to buy like seven of them, I think. And anything else? Ervalus. Whoa, these cost a lot. They do last quite a long time, though. Hmm, okay. And uh, I'm going to play Gwent with him, but... I think in order to save on time, I'm going to be editing this match out. For a few rounds of Gwent. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to do this on screen again. Skip if you don't like watching this. Okay, because you just never know when something really interesting is going to happen. That's why I don't I don't want to edit these out. I'm going to get rid of these cavalry riders. Uh, yes, I drew that Minnow Cohorn. Nice. Actually, that's a massive amount of tempo for the first turn. Let's go ahead and just play him. Maybe force him out of the round. So that's 10 plus, what is that, 8 points? Oh no, oh, that's way more than that. Okay, I was thinking, yeah, something. Uh, 10 plus 18, that's 28 points right from the get-go. Look at that. And he's going to give me a spy. Uh, I think I'm going to reciprocate. No, I'm going to decoy that spy. <laughs> Look at that. Three spies in my hand. Oh my god, he's playing another spy. Which I am perfectly okay with because now I got four spies in my hand. <laughs> Alright, now he's passing. Um, I am not going to play my spies because playing a spy actually wastes a turn. Um, and I want to waste as many turns as I can in round two just to bleed this guy out. Alright, so... I have no intention of winning this round too, so I'm just going to play out all of my spies. Um, if I draw into a couple of those Gontro Dim Darkness, that's fine. I mean, there's no way I'm losing this game. There is actually no way. Given the state of the AI, uh, he's not winning. I mean, if the AR were smarter, uh, eventually it will realize that I'm just like bleeding them out of cards. So it would just like do a what you call a hero pass, meaning pass while your opponent still or while you still have cards in your hand and uh, on the second round where you lost the first round. I know it's awfully specific but it happens more often than you think. In multiplayer Gwen that is. Okay so drew into... wow surprisingly with all those spies I only drew into one of these Gontro Dim's Darkness but I drew into all of my other hero cards so I'm gonna play out these carryover and um, just watch this guy bleed. Oh man. This is, this is actually pretty brutal. I still have 10 cards in my hand. <laughs> Fringula Vigo, okay. Actually, like most Gwent cards in this game can also be found as characters in the game itself. So, oh, okay, maybe not most, but at least some. So for example, okay, not Remed, not even Stefan Skellen. Uh, hmm. Not Schillard either, damn it. Not Cynthia, okay, so just Fringilla Vigo can be found in this game. But, um, like, people like Jennifer, uh, obviously Letho as well, and Gontro Dim, we've already seen him. Uh, Letho we'll see a little bit later. Oh yeah, drawing out his really good cards. That's a lot of tempo, wow. Were those all from his deck, which means he drew none of them? It's pretty impressive. Okay, let's see the last three cards in his hand. He's out of Scorch, Letho, and Abiding Frost. He's got absolutely nothing. And actually, at this point, he hero passes, which is wow. I'm <laughs> you so rarely ever see the uh, the AI actually doing that. That's quite cool. Can I beat him? I think I can. Yeah, let's just beat him. So we'll play this out. Scorch that Stefan Skellen. Um, play this guy. Summon all of the Control Dim's Darkness. And this Yennefer should get me really close. Yep, and I just need to play this guy. Okay, that's it. Beat him in two rounds. Boring. Okay, very nice. Let's proceed. That's what we choose, freak of nature. 
going to the execution. Like Better burn a beast. My mummy's in there now. So there you go with his suit. Well, he ain't easy on the eyes, but he do kill monsters, don't he? And every so often a wyvern will eat a necker, but does that make it good? I've heard ballads of you, and that sorceress of yours, Guinevere. Guinevere? What the heck is that? Oh man, there was a lot of crosstalk there. Um, actually, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my audio settings and just drop the voice volume just a tad, maybe by like, let's say 12%, um, because I do know that uh, these voice volumes can get pretty loud. Okay, so, this guy. Got the courage to repeat that slander to my face? Readily. You are a mutant. A freak. A useless relic of a bygone age that should be burned like a withered branch. Wow, okay. Is it really wise to say that to a guy with two swords ready um, to slice you open? Okay, how many people's lives have you saved? <laughs> Shut up, okay, let's let's ask this one. How many people's lives have you saved? From Brooksay, from Leshens? That has no bearing. Asked you a question. How many? Huh. There's something to think about, folks. Preacher's fierce in the mouth. But all are at him and his tail slings between his legs. Come on, people. Well, there you go. Why don't you all just <laughs> Dispersed the crowd. <laughs> Very nice. Let's move on. Fairness in your eyes. Help a poor fellow out. How are we to fight a pestilence that changes form? None can be certain of his father, brother, or bride. Okay, we got a very interesting scene here. Uh, I said interesting, not pleasant. No evil can survive the holy fire. The holy fire enlightens, burns, and cleanses. Behold the flame of grace and mercy. Special pyre for you, freak. Nice, slow burning. You'll beg for mercy in all the voices known to you, like the others of your species. I've done no wrong. None. I wanted only to live like you. Help me, kind folk, please. Good look, a Doppler. Well, there you go. Get to see the eternal sure, fire. Dude, hasn't met the same fate. At action here. Hmm. Yes, eternal fire indeed. So the two people um, being burned there are called Felicia Corey and Chappelle, as the characters just updated. Actually, the the second guy there, uh, his name isn't actually Chappelle. It was something else. Um, the dude appeared in one of the like the Witcher short stories, and he kind of he's a Doppler, which means that he can transform his shape at will. And he transformed into the previous Eternal Fire, I guess um, the the guy who had uh, Caleb Menga's current position, so the dude who just burned the two. Um, and he transformed into this guy in the uh, Eternal Fire. Apparently, he got found out, and this Caleb guy he certainly has no mercy on these people so let's just take a look real quick I didn't I haven't actually gone through any of the character um, descriptions here in this game because there's just so many of them but for this guy uh, what was his actual name Chancellor of Security of the Church of the Eternal Fire in Novigrad uh, replaced by Doppler yeah masquerading under this name that's what I was trying to say earlier 
Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well. Yeah. That was Listen, more. pretty Where gruesome. Is. She's not his daughter at all. No loitering so round here. Curious what my wife would say about that. Okay. Oh. Oh my God. I just got set on fire by the eternal fire. <laughs> Okay, so our quest is actually going to bring us here. This is Triss's place. Cast a spell and all's gone in a flash. Hey, sod off. We're looting here. Okay, well, let's talk a bit. Not here for the loot. Interested in the sorceress who lived here. And we're supposed to believe that. Yeah. Most likely hiding in some rat trap with the rest of them. Who's she hiding from? Temple Gods cracking down. All mages are fair game. Yeah, they round them up like rats. Someone's got to know more. I'd look for her in a putrid grove. That's a lovely name. Putrid Grove. Interesting, as names go. A hive of scum and freakery if there ever was one. No decent folk show their hides there. That why you think I should look for my friend there? Oh, I meant no offense. Oh, these guys are actually kind of scared of Geralt. Well, who wouldn't be, alright? Putrid Grove. Where is it? I wouldn't know. Rumor has it, it's a place for freaks and oddities. You'd fit in well there. Maybe. Thing is, gotta know how to get there. They say you've got to get there through the sewers, but you've got to enter them outside of town. Few know where exactly, though. Ask a beggar, or spot yourself a thief. Follow him. Beggars and thieves got to pay tribute to the king of beggars. Word is, they do it in the grove. Mean to say the local beggars have a king, crown, scepter, and all that? Wouldn't scoff, mate. King of beggars, it's a moniker. Yeah. For a man who everyone in Novigrad respects deeply. And watch yourself. Menger himself don't even go to the grove. Someone call for me. Wonder why. Speak of the devil it's himself. Menger. Temple God. Thieving vermin to the confession chamber. What, but sir, what's the offense? This is some sorcerer's bitchy shop. Think that gives you the right to steal her property? Well, sorcerers, mages of all types are outlaws. But by law, the temple guard takes possession of their belongings. And the rule of law still holds in Novigrad. Well, tough luck to the looters. You know a bat can sniff out a moth a mile away. Bats? Moth? What are you talking about? Small animals. Can't say I'm really interested. <laughs> I know your trade. Spotted those yellow eyes amidst the rabble in the square right away. Did you notice how much common folk love flames? The eternal fire will consume them all one day, one way or another. And as bats sense moths, so I sense freaks. And start by warning them, Novigrad's no place for your kind. Actually, contrary to his belief, the world is not going to go down in eternal fire. Uh, according to Isleen's prophecy and the proph a prophecy of that one weird old man from last time, uh, the world's going to go down in a eternal frost. A white frost, it's called. Hmm. Well then, just goes to show that Menga doesn't really know much about uh, <laughs> the future state of the world. Let's see. Well, you don't have anything on me. I can only cast very weak witcher signs. I haven't done anything wrong. But you will. Sooner or later, your sort always causes trouble. And this city's mine to protect. Mine. And the eternal fires. Nothing I can do to you now. But just know that I know you're here. One misstep, one error. You'll make a mistake, it's inevitable. I'll be the first to learn of it. And when I do, it'll be standard procedure. Like for every magic oddity who dares taint this city's air. Be seeing you. My goodness. 
this guy is huh, this guy has so much authority um, and he's so like calm and collected that ironically he almost seems demented I don't know if that makes any sense it's just uh, yeah what I'm trying to say is the guy's got his head up his butt Okay, ooh, ruby, silver, oh, I didn't finish looting that, silver, and uh, a book. She, who knows. Yeah, I think uh, at this point of the game, we've actually read most of the books in the game. So, uh, there would be, there will be like very li little actual, uh, oh, speak, speaking of books we can read, Ancient Battle, okay, we'll read that later. But no there rush. should be like, I've only ever known Triss to use one like this. Uh, very few actual book reading in the future. Herbs, roots, just turned to healing. So this is Triss's house, uh, rummaged as you would assume it would be, because you know Radovid is cracking down on all the spellcasters in the city, and Triss, being a relatively famous, or I should say infamous, um, sorceress here in the continent of the Witcher, uh, definitely people will be trying to hunt her down. People being the Witch Hunters and the Eternal Fire and Radovid, you know, you know the people. Amulets are emanating magic. Gotta be Triss's. She was allergic to potions. Allergic to potions, hmm. Okay. Oh, got another book, Polymorphy, ooh. Yeah, so same same thing as we used to do. I'll just leave all of these books that don't pertain to the situation at hand uh, to the end of the episode so that if you don't want to uh, watch me read them, you can just, you know, end off the video when I start reading. Trisses. Never knew how to drop them on the floor. Hmm, okay. That is actually her old outfit from The Witcher 2. Okay, and here we have a certain something, Rose of Remembrance. Yeah, to those of you who have played The Witcher 2, this uh, this will definitely be somewhat of a nostalgic item. The Rose of Remembrance, all dried up. Yep, uh, this thing we'll read right now. Aramis's shop, the best goods around. Come to Aramis's. We deal in goods, both regional and exotic, in rare tomes and precious stones, and in a wide assortment of other unique items recently confiscated from mages, the scourge of our fair city, by our brave and honorable witch hunters, with whose gracious permission these goods are now available for purchase. Don't be shy, step right in and jettison some ex excess ballast from your coin pouch. Uh, and, oh, another new book, Necromancy, the Forbidden Magic. Okay. And what was in this one here? Oh yeah, a Rusty, okay. Okay, uh, so Triss is certainly not here, which means we're gonna have to continue our search. Uh, those two looters did say something about a King of Beggars, good old Francis Bedlam. We gotta seek that guy out. Okay, so quest objectives. Look for thieves on the main square and carefully follow them and talk with beggars about the King of Beggars. Okay. Deepest apologies, Governor. Fetch some metal, you wretch. He did. He fetched your metal. I've been robbed! Thief! <laughs> okay, that's as the good uh, of a starting point as any. Like Let's go. They went this way, I think. I just smear ash on the Was it this way? Damn it. <laughs> It looked like they went this way. Uh, well, hmm. okay. Clearly, I am not the kind of master tracker I thought I was. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Well, ah, oh, damn it! It's so laggy in this town. Hmm. Maybe I'll try to do something about that uh, sometime later. So that's Triss. Yeah, Triss Marigold, witch and harlot, is wanted for practice of, of black magic and conspiracy against the crown. Information leading to her, to her capture will be rewarded. Oh. Okay. 
And this one, a poster of Radovid. Look at that, in all his glorious majesty. <laughs> the gods have heard the land's cry. Its people long wait. No, its people's long wait is over. King Radovid will save the north. That is propaganda at its best. Or at its worst, depending on how you think about it. Um, Pick and choose while I've the inclination. Nice dude. I close okay. Shambles down, I wish I had uh, <laughs> actually paid more attention to where that thief went. Oh well. I guess we can talk to the beggars too. Starting with this guy. Arms for the tape, pee on me, misery, good folk, and aid a man crippled by misfortune. Where it is, nothing's free in Novigrad. Oh, another one come bursting with questions. Now, where do you folk gain the idea we beggars know everything? I need to see this and I need to find that one who robbed me brother. Fuck if I know. <laughs> wow, okay. Looking for the Putrid Grove, brother. There's this place in Novigrad they call the Putrid Grove. Aye, it's about right. Well, Novigrad's full of nooks and crannies with odd names. Looking to sightsee by a bloody map. Heard men like you frequent this alley. And I've heard they fed you all shit and you smiled and ate it. Now... Don't make no offense. Go in peace. Wow, it's kind of hard to not take offense from that, seriously. The dude is sitting in a cart. Why is he in a cart? Is he rolling off somewhere? <laughs> uh, yeah. So he says something very interesting. Uh, he was like, where'd you folk get the idea that we beggars know everything? Now, I don't know if that's like a common legend among like um, kind of medieval fantasy games like this. Or maybe it's just... A, a thing that existed in the real world um, that beggars seem to know like way more than the common folk because I don't know they have ears all over the place and they can hear the kind of um, uh, the kind of gossip that goes around town um, that uh, that concept that uh, beggars know more than they let on um, it's also there oh this is a Vivodi bank by the way yeah we got Vimy Vivodi right there standing there I think I'm gonna talk to him next but I just wanted to uh, talk more a little bit about this beggars thing. Um, that concept also exists in the Outer Scrolls universe. Uh, you'll, you'll find that I, I do compare The Witcher with the Outer Scrolls a lot because they're both massive single player RPGs and they're both very very good in their own regards. They're very different games. Um, as different of games as you can be for two games of the same genre, that being open world RPG. Uh, because The Witcher is more focused on like character development and story and more like of just following Geralt's journey uh, while he's trying to find Ciri. Whereas the Elder Scrolls games, um, I'm going to be like comparing it to mostly like Skyrim, uh, is more about the immersiveness, the journey that you create for yourself, you know, even though there's a story that you follow in the game, but you can kind of dictate what happens along the way. Um, so that's that. So yeah, the concept of the, of the beggars being like really smart, or not smart, but knowledgeable. Uh, that exists in the Outer Scroll universe as well. So, uh, in, in fact, there's a, there's a book uh, about it in that universe saying that uh, there was this prince of beggars who um, kind of knew things and um, because he was blessed by some kind of god or something. I don't want to go, um, go into detail here, but yeah, that's just an interesting comparison. How can I be of service? Okay, so yes, we do owe... Mr. Vavodi here quite a bit of money and we can't really like here's the thing right we don't need to return the the loan to him at no point does he actually send like debt collectors after me and see like Geralt pay up or else right I mean that would be really interesting if that did happen uh, I would probably just kill the debt collectors but uh, out of the kindness of my heart and Geralt is a relatively honorable I say relatively because you know some people are just really terrible. Uh, he's a relatively honorable Witcher. Let's pay back the loan. It's quite a lot of crowns, but uh, I just I just need to get this over with, right? Want to pay back my loan? Splendid. I see you as even more credit worthy than before. Okay, and from now on we can like take out more loans from him, but I believe we can only do like 100 crowns at a time. Let's just take a look. I need coin. Guess I have to take out a loan. Of course, I'll arrange it right away. Oh, oh, 300. Okay. I believe in vanilla it was only 100. So uh, the mod may have changed it. I don't quite I remember. So yeah, I got to pay back 325. But we can borrow 300 at a time, which is very interesting. 
Um, oh, here's the thing. Converting currency. Oh my goodness. I have so many florins and orins. But before I do that, let's ask how's business. How's business? Really? That's the best you've got. That's like asking a fisherman if they're biting or an old gran about her health. Business is booming. There's profit to be made from war, provided you've the know-how. Before Nilfgaard had even crossed the Pontar, I'd contracted for insured deliveries of wood and iron from Covian, reaped a sevenfold return on my investment. Nice. So you might think, but then there's the non-human poll tax, the church's tithe, war taxes, and my overhead. Subtract all that and you're left with a pittance, a dozen or so chests and no more. A dozen or so chests and he calls out a pittance. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, non-human poll tax. That does sound like um, some hogwash. Till next time. Okay, so I'm going to call Roach over here real quick. And hopefully she will come to my beck and call. No? Eternal fire protects us. Ah, there she is. I had to call her three times. Okay, so I just want to take a quick look at, at uh, how many florins and orins I actually have. So with crowns, I got 1866, so I got 14, 13 orins and 608. Uh, let me just write those numbers down. 14, 13, and 608. Okay, so I want to see like what the exact exchange rate is for these uh, for these coins. Okay, Vimy. How can I be of service? Let's do some conversion. Got some coin I'd like to convert into crowns. You've come to the right place. A better rate you'll not find anywhere in the city. A better rate I won't find at all in the city. So 3246. So that looks like um, if we assume that crowns... 3246, right? So if we assume that uh, orins con uh, convert one to one, um, that's about an 18... 18. Yeah, so if we assume that crown uh, orins convert one to one, then florins would actually convert three to one, I believe, if I'm doing my math properly. Um, yeah, there's only so much I can do without a calculator, but How that's pretty good. That's actually like really good. So yeah, we just we just got three thousand crowns richer. You play Gwent, don't you? Oh sure, because I'm a dwarf. Is that it? Do you also believe I know every other bleeding dwarf in existence, and at the end of each day, I deepen the mine shaft in my cellar? So you play or not? I I play. <laughs> Actually, a little bit of trivia. Um, so play me. Stake a unique card, maybe? Why not? Um, dwarves actually invented the game of Gwent. And um, instead of determining who goes first by a coin flip, the, uh, the, the, the turn order is determined by whichever dwarf has the longest beard. Yeah, that's some useless trivia that uh, will get you very far in life. Okay, so this hand is... Oh, it's okay, it's not that great, but at least I have a spy. Um, I got these kind of pointless Nausicaa cavalry riders. Let's just get these out of my way here. Oh man, what is it with these people and playing Commander's Horn so early? Well, all I got are these really weak units, unfortunately. Okay, well that's not good. Hmm. I wish I had like a Letho right now because I would just play the Spy and then play the Letho. That would be a really big point swing. Uh, but what can I do? Uh, let's play, so Gaunter is a 26 point swing, 26 plus 8 is 34 exactly, which kind of sucks, which means I'm just going to play this guy. Hopefully he'll just pass here. No? Okay. <laughs> 26 plus 14, 40, I need a, ah, uh, damn it. Gotta play this commander's horn if I want to keep up. Well, isn't that just kicking me while I'm down? Okay. <laughs> well, what do, <laughs> what do I even do? Let's, let's just play this, whatever. Oh, oh nice. Well, you could have just passed. In that case, 
Um, I'm gonna just play the Gauntur. It's actually a much bigger than 26 point swing because I forgot about my com commander's horn. So yeah, that puts me, oh my god, that put me ahead and I take the round. Ah, so good. Okay, so now I can do a little bit of bleed bleeding. Got this cow. He's probably gonna revive, oh no. I thought he would revive the, the spy. Hmm. I got a decoy for it. Oh, so that one is probably going to, wait a minute. <laughs> what am I thinking? There is no spy in there. <laughs> Okay, so there's another decoy, which is actually pretty good. Um, because he's going to undoubtedly play that spy soon. And when he does, I'm just going to take it. Come on, play the spy. Uh, okay, well, I can still activate my leader ability here. Just to stall out another turn. Fog and a spy. Okay, he's gonna play the spy now. Yes, awesome. Mine. And now we play this and draw into. Oh, very interesting. Um, can I? Can I actually win here? No, I cannot. There's no way. Alright, we still got that 16 points of carryover though, so let's see if my opponent is able to do anything. I highly, highly doubt it, but sometimes they can pull something out of their butt. <laughs> Not in this case though. Thank you for your unique card, Vimy Vavodi. What do you have? Can't rightly recall the last time I was so thoroughly thrashed. The card's yours. Tried your best. Tell me, who else would have worthwhile cards? There's Marquise Serenity, for instance. She don't boast about it, but she has one of the best decks in town and uses it damn well. I know what I'm talking about. Hmm. I... I can't help but to think that's a euphemism of some sort. But I can't really place it. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Let's move on here. Uh, oh, I gotta keep on tracking my uh, Pyres of Novigrad quest and uh, keep an eye out on that Look King of Beggars. Suspicious to me, tramp. Talk to this guy here? Come on. Your strength is gone. I know I can talk to this guy out here. There we go. Arms for the poor. You lame. No, Charles. Both legs in perfect order. And me arms look like a windmill's wings. There. See me waving them? Looky here. Just look. In my mind, thorough addled. With the way the sun is shining on his back, you would you would kind of think he's kind of some kind of divine figure. But clearly, his whole getup and the dirt on his face doesn't really, yeah, doesn't really have that divine kind of look to him. Been like this long, addled? Since me mother birthed me. Here's where it's addled. There. Showing you with me finger. See that? Me indicating. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you are the picture of health. Healthy as a horse as far as I can tell. Priests of look, medics, herbalists. All claimed I'm bewildered. Well, they're wrong. Matters little either way. Folk are generous to me. They enjoy watching me point like this. There! There! Uh, okay, um... I could just get to the point, but this is a very amusing conversation. You're happy. That's what counts. I am. When folk ask me the way, I like that most, because I can point. Like this. There! Ah, because I know my way around the city. Oh, do I ever. So you gotta know where the Putrid Grove is, right? Most certainly do. It's where I live. Over the, uh... There! There! That way! That away, meaning where? In lace halls. There's this alley, past the gate. Not at all putrid and not a grove. Fools call it that, but I know better. And anyone can go there? Of course, unless he forgets to say the old sow's farrowed piglets might not let you in then. But that's easy enough to say. Listen, the old sow's farrowed piglets. See? Thanks for your help. 
Oh well, yeah, that guy was very helpful. Gave us all the information I needed. Okay. What the heck is in this? Bottle. Okay, I can take a bottle. Just as long as I'm not taking it in, like, uh, next to some kind, some guards, because guards really don't like it when we take their stuff. They will actually just attack you, no questions asked, if you, if you actually, uh, take an item that's not yours. Which is pretty hasty, but that's just the way they are programmed. Bakery. Ooh. Oh, wow. That is a, that is a sealed door. And yes, there are a lot of bakery goods here, but no one manning it. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, let's see what this guy has. What have you got there? And I'd hate to like burden this entire episode with so much Gwent, but ah, uh, so sorry. I just have to play it. Um, actually, does he sell anything interesting? Hmm, exquisite honey. Wow, look at that. For six crowns, I can get 19.2 vitality regeneration. That's actually really good, but um, it does weigh quite a bit. When I'm looking for good food, good food is not necessarily food that provides me with a lot of regeneration, but it's just that those ones that weigh very little. Pepper, for example, only weighs 0.1. So uh, we're obviously getting a lot of regeneration per weight, but with foods like this, so for this, for example, um, honey, what does this weigh? I think it's, uh, it will be 0.2, right? Because it's 1.8 for all nine of them, which is pretty good for six crowns. That's, uh, I think I'm going to buy a couple of them. There we go. And olives are also 0.1, but the recovery on it is pretty pathetic. Eh, it only costs one each, so let's go ahead and buy some olives. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. What is this thing? No. Oh. Inkwell. Okay. Well, that's uh, not that exciting. But um, you know what? I think I'm going to buy this book. Ghouls and Al Ghouls. I'm buying it because... Um, I know you need to read these kind of books in order to unlock Mugen decoctions and we need to read two books in total to unlock one so hopefully that will get me what I need so long before we uh, play this guy in Gwent let's take a look here go ahead and read this ghouls and Al ghouls book um, there we go okay beastry entry added okay as for the genesis of ghouls there are hypotheses aplenty some scholars claim these monstrosities arose from scoundrels who indulged in a taste for human flesh and for this misdeed drew the wrath of the heavens down upon themselves the gods punished them by taking away their souls their minds and their human forms my experiments have shown however that ghoul anat uh, anatomy displays far too little in common with that of humans for this thesis to seem at all probable all, uh, any and all similarities in appearance between ghouls and men, such as their somewhat kindred shapes and the measures of uh, their physiognomies, are pure matters of incidental circumstance. It thus follows that ghouls, like their vile cousins, the owl ghouls, are post-conjunction creatures. That is to say, such beings as uh, came to our universe in an abrupt cataclysm, disrupting the normal laws of nature. Okay, cool. Did that unlock a uh, decoction? Yes, it did! Manuscript page, necrophage decoction. Finally, we got our very first decoction in this game. Oof, made a good choice buying that book. And um, it was actually kind of a coincidence that I, I, just, I just remembered because um, I was just thinking this guy is selling a book. I wasn't really even thinking about the fact that they can unlock decoctions, but somehow that thought entered my mind and I got one. So here we go, necrophage decoction. Uh, requires ghoul's blood, necro mutagen, okay, or any kind of uh, necrophage mutagen, I'm guessing, and um, big old pure distillate, and also necrophage mutagen. So wait, what is this? Do I need to like? Um, I'm guessing we can also use necrophage arch mutagen to craft this. Um. Out of pure curiosity, I think I'm going to just go ahead and do one right now. Let's see. I probably need a fireplace to do this, though, but... Uh, let's see. Yeah, definitely need a fireplace. Ugh. In that case, I might be able to do this as a, at a herbalist as well. And I think I saw one over there. Yeah, so that guy right there. 
Uh, before we do that, though, we're gonna play some Gwent and. Welcome, welcome. I really hope that there will be more kind of story content in this episode, but I guess running around and playing Gwent has its own charms. Am I right? A game of Gwent. How about it? Am I right or what? <laughs> I feel like a lot of people are gonna say I'm wrong, but whatever. I don't need to listen to you. <laughs> Okay, so we got this guy in the deck. Um, what do I want to take out here? Oh yeah, this guy is garbage. He doesn't even bond with anyone in my deck just yet. And okay, let's go. Start game. I'm gonna go first and oh my goodness. Ah, oh, damn it. I have I have both Meno and Gontra in my hand, but I have two Odim's Darkness and two Cavalry Riders. Ah, that sucks. Damn it. And one of these freaking darkness made it through. Well, there's nothing I can do about it. Just gotta play these out individually. Um, yeah, this is just like a regular merchant. His deck is probably not that powerful. Shame that I don't have any decoys in my hand though. Otherwise, I would scoop that up so fast. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just play this Odin's Darkness. Just so I don't draw into it later. Oh, there's that mental cohort of his. Let's see how many of those riders he drew. Two of them. Okay, not bad. <laughs> Takes a lot of cards out of his hand. Alright, so at this point I'm going to play my own spy. Hopefully draw into a decoy. Yes, nice. And he's going to do that. Okay, I'm going to decoy the Cynthia. It's a game of spies. That's what Gwent really is. Game of Spies. Uh, so I'm down by 16 points. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's worth playing two cards just to get that 16 points because... Whoops, sorry. Because winning the first round is uh, super, super important. So I'm gonna go ahead and... I need to play 17 points in this case. Uh, there's really no way of doing that without playing Gaunter. I mean, no way of doing that within two cards. So, just gotta do it like this. Okay. Got the first round. Second round. You know, you know the drill, guys. Okay. Play the spies. Yeah, a lot of people see the card commander scorns like double the power of all units on one row and they're like, whoa, this card is so good. But really, Decoy is just a much superior special card because, you know, Decoy, I mean, sure, doubling unit power is good, but Decoy gives you an extra card, as in, you don't have to, your, your, the cards in your hand don't change that turn, which means uh, if your opponent's cards change, then you just went up by one card, and that's, like, super important. Okay, so 34 points, I can't make it, so I'm just gonna pass here. Uh, probably should have played my spy first, but whatever. I still think I got this. Okay, let's go ahead and just play this dude here. Who is this guy? Reynold Ep Matson. Okay. Oh, and he saved Letho for last. Oh. Oh, shoot. Huh. Did I get a little too cocky there? <laughs> Yeah, not playing the spy on my second round was a big mistake. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I lost. I have exactly 20 points. He has 21. No, no, I, I actually only have 19. Vesemir doesn't... Oh, wait! Oh! <laughs> I win by one point! Oh my god. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, I got really confident there. And I was like, oh shoot, that was a big mistake. But yeah, stuff like that. This is why I keep this stuff on screen, because sometimes it's really amusing. Whether it's, it's from my own mistakes or it's from like just what the opponent does. You know, Gwent. Um, yeah, sweat enough in the gutter. Interesting things happen. Eternal That's for sure. Okay, so we're going to pay a quick visit to this uh, herbalist here. Is there a herbalist what brings here? You to me? Hmm, no there isn't. Interesting. Yeah, that was just a, a cached icon on the map, which means Ooh. that 
there may have been a herbalist at some point over there, but um, there isn't right now, I'm guessing. Okay, in that case, I'm just going to spend some firewood and uh, we'll craft this mutagen just by sitting here on this guy's porch. All right. So first I need to craft a, an actual mutagen, which is, I'm gonna go with necrophage mutagen in this case, um, or arc mutagen. I'm gonna need to buy some alkahests if I'm going to make this work, hmm. which are pretty expensive. I think they cost like 24 crowns each, something like that. All right, let's go ahead and just craft this thing here. And we're going to, let's see. Oh, what? No way. The arch mutagen doesn't count. Ah, oh, man. I was so excited to craft that mutagen. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. So what do I actually need there then? This is, uh, this is very strange. So over here, I can kind of use any, um, I guess, power mutagens. But over here, I need a necrophage mutagen, which I have no idea what it is. Hmm. Well, I might have to do some research uh, after the episode is done here. Although, documentation on the inner workings of W3EE uh, on the internet is kind of like really bleak. There, there's not a lot of it, so I'm going to have to do some digging. And of course, you guys can help me out by giving me an answer. But the thing is, I publish these video videos so late after I actually record them that um, any advice that you guys can give me uh, on this video, I'll probably be like way ahead by then and either would have discovered it or it would have like been a very long time since I, I'm able to do this. So, well, that's a shame. Yeah, because I have a lot of the other materials to use. Look at that, that costs a lot. Hmm. This decoction better be like really good, let's see. It lasts 1584 seconds, which is just under an hour. So just under half an hour, I mean. Killing an opponent while at, while at, at or below 30% vitality restores 10% of maximum vitality. Adrenaline takes two seconds longer to degenerate. Takes two seconds longer, oh. And 15% resistance to ethereal damage provides 25 toxicity. Okay, so that is definitely better than some of the like mutagen decoctions from Vanilla Witcher 3, or even from like the uh, the last version of the Enhanced Edition. Um, certainly a lot more creative. So definitely want to find a way to actually craft this thing. So uh, well, can't really do it right now, but because we have this fire already built, might as well see if I can craft some other stuff. I don't want to. I don't want to like uh, waste this fireplace. Mm, well, wow, I actually have a lot of stuff here. Um, let's go ahead and craft like a tiara or two. Let's see. Okay, we got... I'll use these monster blood samples. Wait, uh, try to get an enhanced one if I can. Oh, buckthorn. Some what have two, the monster tongue sample, that's fine. And can I get another enhanced one here? Ah, there we go. Wait, I don't want to use harpy eggs. Mm, the troll hide segment. Okay, that's that. And I might as well just spend some time here at the campfire, get that vitality bonus. There we go. Okay. Hi, Roach. Enjoying yourself in Novigrad? Because I am. What's he doing here? Okay, so let's move on here. Oh, oh wait. Whoa, we are over an hour already? Ah, oh, damn. Time really does fly. I would go a little longer today because I, I want to get something done in this episode, but unfortunately, I have somewhere to be in like 20 minutes, so I need to go get ready. Um, so yeah, we're going to need to end things off here. And next time we come back, uh, we're gonna go visit the King of Beggars there in the Putrid Grove and hopefully find Triss and um, she might have some insight on where Ciri has gone. Anyways guys, thanks for watching this time. I'll see you guys in the next one.